an American-born public relations professional working in East London, got romantically involved with a co-worker by the name of Mark Weeks in July of 2017. The latter's relationship with Jessica Nordquist was brief, but she became obsessed with the man after it was over. According to law enforcement's subsequent findings, Nordquist bombarded Weeks with messages and contacted his clients claiming he'd assaulted and abused her. She even went so far as to create as many as 20 fake Instagram accounts to post similarly sordid claims against her former partner. The Alaska native's campaign of harassment didn't end there, however. She allegedly purchased a fake baby bump online to deceive Weeks into believing she was pregnant with his child. In February of 2018, Nordquist was arrested and charged with one count of stalking and two counts of malicious communications. A month before she was due back in court, the woman's cyber-stalking spree culminated in an elaborate kidnapping hoax in which she sent pictures of herself bound and unclothed to family, friends and colleagues on Weeks himself, claiming she'd been abducted by some sort of crime group. Scotland Yard's Kidnap and Modern Slavery Unit assisted police officers with an investigation into Nordquist's kidnapping claims. She was ultimately found safe and alone at a bed and breakfast in the Scottish Highlands. In December of 2018, Nordquist was jailed for four and a half years as a consequence for her extreme harassment. Upon her release, she was ordered to face deportation back to the United States. Number six, Aaron Romo. On the afternoon of March the 17th of 2023, police were called to an apartment in the 1900 block of South Union Street in Anaheim, California. Dispatch had received reports of suspicious circumstances unfolding at the residence in question, inside of which officers subsequently found the lifeless body of 24-year-old Mirel Mateus. The young woman's mother, Alice, had stumbled upon the body first after noticing her daughter was missing and deciding to check the apartment, which belonged to Morel's ex-boyfriend, Aaron Romo. The victim's family informed law enforcement that the former couple had a documented history of violence and abuse. In late 2022, Morel and her loved ones had even filed for a restraining order from Romo, who had previously tormented other partners in similar fashion. The 36-year-old man was released from custody on December the 5th in connection with a domestic incident involving his ex-wife for which he had been charged with several offences, including felony counts of corporal injury on a spouse or cohabitant and false imprisonment. While authorities didn't immediately reveal Morel's specific manner of death, they did disclose their belief that she was murdered and that her ex was the culprit. Romo was arrested and booked at the Anaheim Police Department detention facility, where he was held without bail on murder charges. Number five, Dwayne Harrell Jr. In the early hours of January the 29th of 2023, Irene Torres was viciously attacked outside the home she shared with her parents in Old Hickory, Tennessee. The 24-year-old was fatally stabbed in the excess of 17 times. After realizing she hadn't come home that night, the young woman's parents reviewed the footage from their property surveillance system. The video recording showed Torres' ex-boyfriend, a former MMA fighter by the name of Dwayne Harrell Jr., dragging her body out of view of the cameras. As would subsequently come to light, 28-year-old Harrell then stuffed the body into the trunk of his car and drove to his apartment in Bellevue, where he reportedly hid it in his closet. The victim's parents confronted Harrell after spotting him on the surveillance footage. Although he initially claimed that Torres was at a hotel, he ultimately confessed to the murder and told them where he'd concealed her remains. The authorities were then notified of the situation and Harrell was arrested on murder charges. A police spokesman revealed that in addition to hiding Torres' body in his closet, the suspect had also tossed her purse and his own bloody pants in a dumpster behind a nearby grocery store. The pair had reportedly broken up only a month prior to the murder, according to the victim's sister. Harrell was described as having been abusive both physically and emotionally throughout their relationship and had apparently ambushed Torres as she returned home from work that night. During a preliminary court hearing in February of 2023, Harrell showed little emotion while appearing before a packed courtroom. As of the latest updates, he was being held in custody without bond. Number four, Zachariah Anderson. Wisconsin man Rosario Gutierrez Jr. was last seen or heard from on May the 17th of 2020. Two days later, having been unable to get in touch with him, the man's girlfriend, Sadie Beecham, swung by his home. She was immediately caught off guard by the patio door which had been left open. After venturing further inside, Beecham noticed 
blood all over the furniture, floor and ceiling, as well as a rug that was missing. She called the police, who dispatched officers to conduct a welfare check on Gutierrez. A criminal complaint later detailed how investigators discovered enough blood inside the residence to suggest a lethal amount of blood loss. They also found evidence that a frenzied physical struggle had taken place. Beecham told detectives that she believed her obsessive ex-boyfriend might have been responsible for Gutierrez's disappearance and presumed death. Officers went to investigate the ex, identified as Zachariah Anderson, who reportedly shared three children with Beecham. At both Anderson's home and farm, they found smoldering burn pits containing the ashes of a bleach bottle, as well as the man's clothing. Investigators also collected the victim's DNA from the interior of Anderson's work van, which had been scrubbed with bleach. A few days later, a warrant was issued for Anderson's arrest. He pleaded not guilty to each of his charges, which included felony counts of stalking, homicide, and hiding a corpse. During the resulting trial, which garnered considerable attention from the general public, it was revealed that Anderson had been spying on his ex-girlfriend and had grown jealous of her new relationship with Gutierrez. Whenever Beecham's path would cross with Anderson's during the course of their co-parenting, she said he would frequently bring Gutierrez up in conversation. Anderson was also accused of having the couple's daughter accompany him on a drive to Gutierrez's home, where they watched him and Beecham through the window. The man took photos of his love rival's license plate and registration, rang the doorbell, then fled. The month-long trial was fraught with controversy, with allegations of coaching witnesses being fired at both the prosecution and defense. Prosecutors accused Anderson of making hand signals to his daughter as she testified, while Beecham was accused of the same thing by the defense team. In the end, Anderson was found guilty on all charges and was sentenced to a life term for first-degree intentional homicide with the possibility of extended supervision after 40 years. Anderson was also sentenced to four years in prison for two counts of stalking and six years for hiding a corpse. Number 3. Yesenia Sanchez in late 2022, a former Miami-Dade school's police officer got into trouble with the law in the aftermath of a toxic romantic relationship. 32-year-old Yesenia Sanchez had been removed from the force the previous year following an incident in which she armed herself with a gun and knife while threatening to cause herself harm. Then on the morning of November the 4th of 2022, she reportedly used an electric application to track her ex-boyfriend to a home on West 79th Street in Hialeah. There, she confronted her ex Damien Colon, a 17-year veteran of the Miami-Dade Police Department. The man was off duty when Sanchez rolled up on him outside his house, triggering an argument. The woman eventually pulled out a gun and shot Colon in the head before driving away in a red pickup. Police responded to the scene shortly after 6.30 a.m., whereupon they found Colon in critical condition on the porch. He was airlifted to the Ryder Trauma Center in Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami. Sanchez crashed the truck into other cars multiple times as she made her getaway, before ultimately abandoning it in the area of Palm Avenue and 45th Street. She subsequently fled on foot, dropping her wallet in the process, and was arrested at her home about an hour later. Sanchez confessed to her crimes, which according to police records included attempted murder, aggravated stalking, and leaving the scene of an accident. The authorities later provided some context for Sanchez's attack on Colon. The two law enforcement officers had only recently broken up after a seven-year relationship marred by the prevalence of domestic violence. Number 2. Michael Dighton Englishman Michael Dighton from Newcastle-upon-Tyne met Sophie Bruce on Facebook in 2014 and the two subsequently sparked up a romantic relationship. Things quickly turned sour because of the extreme control Dighton insisted on holding over his girlfriend. In subsequent reports, it was revealed that the man would force Bruce to send him selfies throughout the day to see where she was. He was also accused of forbidding the young woman from wearing makeup and ordering her to delete all of the male contacts in her phone and on social media. There were also indications of verbal and physical abuse inflicted upon Bruce while they were dating. Dighton even allegedly phoned the young woman's workplace to sabotage her relationship with her boss and sometimes loitered outside the business while she was working. Bruce ultimately ended things with Dighton, who was subsequently dubbed the selfie stalker and charged with harassment, for which he was given a restraining order. Nevertheless, the couple were soon back together and Dighton's domineering pattern of behavior resumed. Between May of 2018 and mid-2019, the man allegedly assaulted Bruce a total of three times, leaving her with 
a perforated eardrum and bruising around the eye. In the peer's climactic altercation, Dyth not only attacked her but also damaged some of her personal items, tossed shoes around the bedroom, and chucked several of her belongings out the fourth floor window. Bruce grabbed her dog and tried to make a run for it, but Dighton pulled her back inside. She was fortunately able to flee while he was distracted. The man later admitted controlling or coercive behavior in Newcastle Crown Court. He was ultimately spared jail time with a suspended sentence that included probation and a 7 p.m. curfew. In case you feel like learning about some more cases of extreme stalking, then stay tuned after number one. We've got our previous video on that lined up right after. Number one, Tremaine Dillon. Northumbria University graduate Alice Ruggles formed an intense online relationship with an Indian-born British Army soldier named Tremaine Dillon, who was stationed in Afghanistan. They met in person for the first time in January of 2016, about three months after their initial internet encounter. The pair dated for several months, but it was instantly obvious to those close to Ruggles that Dylan was having a negative effect on her mental health. Friends of the young woman described how she went from being a sociable ray of sunshine to being socially withdrawn, with the line of demarcation being the beginning of her relationship with Dylan. The latter allegedly demanded Ruggles' constant attention and isolated her from loved ones. In August of 2016, 24-year-old Ruggles officially put an end to their relationship, but Dylan refused to accept the breakup and heighten his obsession with her. He reportedly hacked her social media accounts to monitor her activities and repeatedly sent groveling messages begging for her to take him back. Upon learning that Ruggles might have a new boyfriend, Dylan's unhealthy fixation on her developed into a nefarious stalking campaign in which he regularly made five-hour round trips just to knock on her bedroom window and leave gifts on the windowsill. Ruggles got the police involved, at which point Dylan was told by his commanding officer to cease all contact with her. He flouted the orders to send Ruggles a pleading note in the mail, but she declined when asked by police if she wanted him arrested. Then on October the 12th, Dylan snuck into the young woman's flat in Gateshead, Tyne and Weir. He ambushed her as she was trying on a ball gown and messaging her new boyfriend. It's believed that Ruggles tried to lock herself in the bathroom but was overpowered by Dylan, who slit her throat then fled the scene with her cell phone. Ruggles' roommate found her shortly thereafter, but it was too late to save her life. The flatmate reportedly named Dylan as a likely suspect and he was arrested at his barracks later that night. Blood was found on some of his belongings as well as on the steering wheel of his BMW. He told police that Ruggles had died after accidentally stabbing herself in the neck, but was nevertheless taken into custody on murder charges in the spring of 2017. Dylan was found guilty in Newcastle Crown Court and was jailed for life with a minimum term of 22 years. Number 7. Jacqueline Addis 31-year-old Jacqueline Addis of Phoenix, Arizona, was found guilty of stalking a man with whom she'd only gone on one date. The unidentified victim told the police that Addis had sent him a total of 159,000 messages over the course of less than a year, some of which were violent in nature. Addis found the man on the exclusive millionaire dating app Luxie. He was a businessman who served as the CEO of a successful company in Paradise Valley. Addis, a beautician, had gone out with him once in the summer of 2017, after which he decided not to pursue a second date with her. The woman proceeded to stalk him for the next 10 months, inundating him with text messages and even showing up outside his house on one occasion in July of 2017. The man called the police following her appearance at his residence, but she didn't stop harassing him and even returned to his home a few months later. It wasn't until May of 2018 that Addis's extensive stalking was brought to its overdue conclusion. She was arrested by Paradise Valley Police after being found bathing in the man's tub. Law enforcement also discovered a large butcher knife in the passenger seat of her car. Addis would reportedly send the subject of her obsession more than 500 messages on some days and, in many of them, threatened to kill him going so far as to call herself the new Hitler. The criminal charges against her were eventually dropped after she was found to be mentally incompetent and non-restorable. Her court-appointed attorney revealed her plans to move to Florida and seek treatment for her mental illness. She was permanently prohibited from making any form of contact with the man she was found guilty of stalking. Number 6. Jeremy Kelly A stalker killed his ex-girlfriend and then took his own life. 
just nine days after a warrant had been issued for his arrest. Jeremy Kelly and Rosemary Riley, a pair of 21-year-olds from Ottawa County, Michigan, had shared a contentious relationship leading up to the event that ultimately resulted in both their deaths. After they'd already broken up, Riley, a student at Grand Valley State University, filed a restraining order against her ex-boyfriend, which did little to stop him from stalking and threatening her on multiple occasions. Riley notified local law enforcement that she'd been beaten and held at gunpoint by Kelly, also reporting that he'd then started following her around. Despite having knowledge of the assault and the ensuing stalking, the police didn't take Kelly into custody. On November the 6th of 2016, he arrived at the East Town residence belonging to one of Riley's friends, at which his ex-girlfriend was staying the night. He allegedly dragged Riley outside by her hair in the middle of the night. When she tried to get back inside the house, he fired multiple 9mm rounds at her, killing her instantly. In the incident's aftermath, Riley's family took legal action against campus police and Ottawa County Sheriff's deputies, claiming they'd failed to properly protect the victim prior to her murder. The lawsuit also alleged that the warrant for Kelly's arrest hadn't been executed in a timely manner because his father was a police officer. The lawsuit was dismissed by a federal judge in September of 2020. Number 5. Erica Capps In the fall of 2017, a Florida woman was found guilty of stalking her ex-boyfriend and planting a tracking device on his car. Erica Capps of Samford had reportedly stalked the man with whom she shared a child for two months prior to her eventual arrest. The first incident occurred on September the 19th, when Capps showed up at the Altamonte Springs home belonging to one of the victim's friends. She sent him a text message demanding he come outside. When he obliged, Capps began to berate him for allegedly going to visit a female friend's house. The exact same situation was reported a month later at a friend's home in Maitland, and then again at a Best Buy in Sanford. On November the 8th, the victim saw Capps approaching him at a Walgreens, at which point he promptly left the store. As the man would later tell the police, he began receiving messages from Capps with pictures of locations he'd recently visited. He became increasingly suspicious as to how his ex-girlfriend so often knew of his exact whereabouts. It was then that the victim found a GPS tracking device on the underside of his vehicle and got in touch with local authorities. Capps was arrested and charged with stalking, but she was granted release upon the condition that she ceased all forms of contact with her ex-boyfriend. Number 4. Lue Nader Sacco A 23-year-old woman was stabbed to death inside her Melbourne home in 2020 by a former colleague who'd been stalking her for months. Celeste Mano had worked with Lue Nader Sacco, aged 35, at a call center in South Morang before the latter was fired from his position in 2019. Mano who'd been Sacco's team leader, tried to comfort him following his termination. According to police, the man subsequently stalked his former co-worker for nearly a year after his employment at the call center had ended. He sent her more than 150 messages on social media, prompting Mano to take out an interim intervention order against him. Sacco was soon charged with breaching the order, but he was allowed to walk free. The man's obsession with Mano came to a bloody culmination on November the 14th, of 2020. In the early morning hours, Sacco broke into the home that belonged to the victim and her family. Mano was asleep in her bed when Sacco fatally stabbed her. He was arrested and charged with the murder but sought to circumvent jail time by having a medical professional declare him mentally unstable. Following an inconclusive assessment of his mental state, Sacco requested a second opinion in October of 2021. A pronouncement in that regard is pending but his lawyer had previously stated that Sacco had no history of mental illness. Number 3. Charles Dean Bryant In 2016, a man with a known history of stalking women was found guilty of the brutal murder of Jacqueline Vandergriff, aged 24. Local authorities in Grapevine, Texas, first became aware of the situation at roughly 6.30 on the morning of September the 14th. Firefighters responded to reports of a forest fire in Acorn Woods Park. Vandergriff's dismembered corpse was discovered at the scene inside a plastic kiddie pool. The perpetrator had reportedly set her remains ablaze with an accelerant and subsequently fled the scene, although witnesses did tell police that they'd seen a man standing over the fire around the time it was started. It soon emerged that Vandergriff had met 30-year-old Charles Dean Bryant at the Fry Street Public House in Denton on the night before her death. 
Surveillance footage taken from a nearby Walmart revealed that Brand had purchased the shovel earlier that day. Consequently, Grapevine police obtained a search warrant for the man's house, where they found the victim's purse inside his trash. There was also a kiddie pool in his backyard that looked exactly like the one found at the crime scene. Brian's roommate told detectives that there had previously been two plastic pools in the backyard. Brian was then arrested and charged with Vandergriff's murder. The incident took place a mere four days after he'd been released from jail, where he'd been detained on charges of stalking his ex-girlfriend. It was speculated that Brian had targeted Vandergriff specifically because she bore a close resemblance to the woman he'd been stalking. The killer will spend the rest of his days behind bars, having been sentenced to life in prison plus 20 years. Number 2. Stanley Zaliga In 2021, an exotic dancer from Fort Worth, Texas, was fatally shot while behind the wheel of a moving vehicle by a 54-year-old man who'd been stalking and blackmailing her. The murder of Abby Saldana, age 22, was carried out by Stanley Zaliga, a regular customer at Rick's Cabaret, the club where the victim worked. Surveillance cameras near the woman's apartment complex had captured Zaliga's pickup truck in the area at least five times within a 12-day span, indicating that he'd been stalking her in the weeks preceding the eventual shooting. Saldana also discovered a tracking device that had been planted underneath her car less than two weeks prior to her death. Zaliga had been visiting her at Rick's Cabaret on a regular basis and according to police reports, he'd threatened to publicly reveal the illicit escort services that she'd allegedly provided him. At about 9 p.m. on October the 26th of 2021, witnesses reported seeing a car speeding down the roadway near the entrance to the Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. The vehicle then hurtled off the side of the exit ramp and crashed into the grassy area off the side of the road. The driver was identified as Saldana. She was pronounced dead at the scene after sustaining gunshot injuries to her back and arm. Investigators spoke with the owner of Rick's Cabaret and learned that Zaliga had been stalking Saldana for some time and that she'd feared for her life. A SWAT unit arrived at Zaliga's residence just before midnight on October the 27th. They entered the home to find the man on his balcony with multiple self-inflicted cuts to his arm. While being treated for his wounds, he was arrested and charged with Saldana's murder, having shot the woman from his own vehicle as he followed closely behind her. Number 1. Michael Lane Leading up to her murder on August the 25th of 2016, Shana Grice, aged 19, had pleaded with police to take action against her alleged stalker on several occasions. The victim had become romantically involved with 27-year-old Michael Lane in 2015, when the two worked together in Brighton, England. The man allegedly became obsessed with Grice, who eventually returned to her former boyfriend of hers after ending her relationship with Lane. Following the breakup, Lane reportedly told a friend she'll pay for what she's done. He subsequently placed a tracking device on Grice's vehicle and began stalking her. Members of Sussex law enforcement were first informed of the situation in February of 2016 after Grice complained about Lane sending her unwanted flowers and inflicting damage to her car. Over the course of the next six months, the police were notified of three additional incidents in which Lane had stalked or assaulted his ex-girlfriend. Officers found that Grice's claims didn't warrant further investigation and she was issued a penalty notice for wasting the police's time. A few weeks before her death, Grice noticed Lane loitering outside her residence but opted not to report him to the police for fear of receiving another fine. On August the 25th, Lane broke into Grice's home, slit her throat and set fire to her bedroom. The teenager's dead body was found by her boyfriend's father. Lane was arrested at his place of work later that same day. After a two-week trial, the stalker-turned-killer was sentenced to life in prison. Three Sussex police officers faced disciplinary action for their failure to properly investigate Grice's claims against Lane. The victim's parents publicly expressed their belief that their daughter would have still been alive had law enforcement officials adequately performed their duties. A documentary centering on Grice's tragic and arguably preventable demise was broadcast on British television in March of 2021. Thanks for watching. Would you rather get daily texts from an ex you can't stand or have to dip your toes in steaming hot water every time you want to eat something? Let us know in the comments section below.